Okay, let's take a look now at uh, KNN for classification. KNN stands for K nearest neighbors. So we look at the K nearest neighbors technique for classification. Uh, once again, this topic is covered extensively in the textbook that was given to you. So I'm going to do a quick review of the topic and then uh, for more details, you can actually look at the textbook. Whatever is covered in the textbook is what I'm talking about here really. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm taking a very simple example to motivate the idea here. Uh, let's say you've got a set of people in living in some neighborhood and uh, I'm considering the US uh, political situation here. So some people are Democrats and some people are Republicans. So let's assume that this is actually representing the diagram you're seeing on the board on the slide is representing uh, you know people living in a certain neighborhood, actual geographical layout. So you've got a bunch of people who are Democrats, uh, Republicans, the red uh, circles, and then a bunch of Democrats who are uh, represented by the blue circles. Okay. So these are the actual physical layout of various households. Okay. So now uh, you've got uh, somebody here. There's a person here whose political affiliation we do not know whether he's a Democrat or a Republican. In fact, here and here. Now this person seems to be living in a predominantly Republican neighborhood. Okay, so if the uh, you know political affiliation of people living close by to you is an indicator of your political preference, then we could use that neighborhood information to see uh, to classify this person as a Republican or a Democrat, vice versa for this person. Okay, so this is a person living in a predominantly Republican neighborhood. So you may say, well, this person is more likely to be a Republican. And this person is living in a predominantly democratic neighborhood. You may say this person is likely to be a Democrat. Okay, based on the affiliations of the close neighbors. In this case, when we are talking about neighbors, we are really talking about geographic neighbors. What we'll try and do is extend this concept to regular data analysis. Okay, one important question is, okay, uh, how many neighbors should we consider? If you consider just one neighbor, Okay, then this person, the closest neighbor happens to be a Democrat, so you will classify this person as a Democrat. In other words, what we'll be trying to do is to take a person, take a certain set of neighbors, and then uh, based on the majority vote, based on the number of neighbors, in other words, if there are, if you consider three neighbors, two of them happen to be Rep Republicans, then you say, okay, this person is likely to be a Republican or the probability of this person being a Republican is two-thirds. Probability of this person being a Democrat is one-third. Okay, so you consider a certain number of neighbors. That's what the K neighbor, nearest neighbor comes, stands for. K is how many neighbors you want to consider. And then we take the proportions from the classification of those K neighbors. Okay, so one important question that comes up in, in all this is how many neighbors should we actually consider? Okay, should we consider one or two or three? In this case, if you consider just one neighbor, then you would actually end up classifying this person as a Democrat. If you consider more than that, you'll end up classifying the person as a Republican. Same thing here. The closest neighbor happens to be a Republican, but if you expand slightly, you'll classify this person as a Democrat. Okay. Now, of course, if you consider too low a value for neighbors, then uh, you have the, you open yourself to the risk that you will go just by individual cases. And if you have too many neighbors, then you know, you will find that it's not of any use. So in this case, there's actually a 50-50 uh, breakup between Democrats and Republicans. If you consider all the neighbors for a particular case, then you will be pretty much evenly split among this. So you will not be able to make a decision. If you consider too few neighbors, then you will end up making freaky random sorts of decisions. Okay, so that's the trade-off. And the way we arrive at a good solution is to consider many values and see how they perform. Right, we consider several values of K and see how each one performs. After all, we are going to be able to break up the data, partition the data, and then we'll try it out and see which one seems to perform well. And based on that, we'll select a model. Okay, so if you consider too high, then you have too little specificity. If you have too low a value of K, then you latch on to noise. Okay, so here we are just considering an arbitrary example, income of a certain set of people, the number of cars they own, and the target variable of interest is whether they own a boat or not. Yes or no. Okay. So income 85. Suppose we now have, this is our uh, data. Now we have a case in our validation partition. Income is 85,000. Number of cars is 2. 
Okay, so earlier we were talking about neighborhood purely in terms of geographical distance. But now in a real life case like this, how do you think about distance between the cases? Right? In the earlier case, distance between two people was simply the geographical distance, how far away those two homes were. In this case, how far away is this case a person with income 85,000 number of cars is 2 how far away is this person let's say from a particular case say for example this this case the second case whose income is 120,000 and number of cars is 2 okay so we need to be able to translate this notion of distance geographical distance to distance in this kind of a context okay so that's what we will uh, we now need to look at Okay, so what do you mean by neighbors in this kind of situation? Okay, so one way is to use our definition of Cartesian distance, right? Using Pythagoras theorem, you can always calculate the distance between two points, right? Uh, ge geometric distance between two points in terms of uh, coordinates, and from that you can calculate this. So, for example, here you have a case 95,001, no boat. And another, of course, we are not interested when you're talking about distance, we are not interested in the target variable, we are only interested in the predictor variables. So, here you can say the distance is this formula. Okay, 95,000 minus 85,000 the whole square plus 1 minus 2 the whole square. Okay, that is x1 minus x2 the whole square plus y1 minus y2 the whole square, square root of that. Okay, that's just the distance formula in two dimensions. So, you can use that as a measure of closeness. Right? So, when I say find the k nearest neighbors to a particular case, find those points for which this distance measure is the lowest. Okay, So, that's a distance measure, measure of distance between this point and this point. Okay, So, find the measure of distance to every point and select the k nearest ones. That's the idea of the k nearest neighbor approach. Okay, So, clearly, if you have to calculate distance, then your predictor variables have to be numeric, right? After all, your predictor variables, income and number of cars are both numeric. So, unless your predictor variables are numeric, you cannot really compute distance. And therefore, KNN for classification requires numerical predictors. Okay, the predictor variables have to be numerical. And of course, we are talking of classification and therefore, the target variable has to be categorical or it has to be a factor. Otherwise, you cannot apply KNN for classification. Okay, so you have to either have them up front like this or you have to convert them into this so that you can apply KNN for classification. Okay, now the KNN technique is also amenable to regression and we'll discuss that later in the course. Okay, now let's look at this distance metric. So let's consider two cases. One is income is 95,000, number of cars is 1. Another person income is 85,000, number of cars is 2. So if you apply the distance formula, you find that this distance between these two comes to uh, close to 10,000. Okay, very close to 10,000. 10,000.0000 something. Okay. Now if you consider 95,050 and one car and 85,000 and two cars, almost the same, the income is very slightly different then the distance increases by 50 10,050 okay but if you consider 95,000 and three cars 85,000 and two cars okay now remember this case 95,000 one car 95,000 and three cars the number of cars has jumped drastically okay so we would expect that this distance okay that this distance we would expect it to be quite different from this distance because the two cases that, that are being compared in these are fairly uh, drastically different. However, if you actually did it, you'll find that the distance still comes out only as very, very close to 10,000. Okay, And then finally, you consider 95,000 and five cars, not even three cars, five cars. So this case is drastically different from this case. However, if you compute the distance, it still comes out only as 10,000. Okay, not exactly 10,000, 10,000 point zero 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 something. Very small difference. What's going on here? 
what's going on here is that because the relative magnitudes of income and number of cars are so different incomes are so huge and number of cars is just a small number one two three four five or something okay so because of that the high values of income are simply dominating our distance calculations okay so distance is very insensitive to the number of cars so in order to do uh, you know to make sure that the distance really reflects actual difference between the cases we tend to do what is called as normalization of the values of the predictor values right how do you normalize predictor values you may have covered it in your earlier course how do you normalize predictor values you subtract the mean of the values and divide it by the standard deviation okay that is the mean for these values is 44,463 the standard deviation is 8691 so you say for every value you subtract the mean and then divide it by the standard deviation okay in other words you're taking this regular distribution and you're converting it into a normal 0 1 distribution okay so this so the normalized values will look like this okay these are the normalized values or standardized values however you want to call them okay now therefore when you take the income and you convert it into normalized values the average will be zero and then you'll get values which are between you know uh, certain number of standard deviations right so every value is simply how many standard deviations away from the mean the value is okay so even if the values originally were very high after normalization or scaling those values become just you know uh, approximately between minus 3 and plus 3 okay now number of cars the values are actually 1 2 3 4 5 very small when you normalize them they will also come pretty much into the same range okay so now a particular variable is not going to dominate the calculations as uh, dominate the distance calculations as happened in the previous case okay that is the idea of normalization or scaling another way of normalization or scaling is not to do uh, you know uh, this kind of normalization converting it into a normal distribution another may be just to take the scale the value such that the lowest value minimum is 0 maximum is 1 okay so every variable will then have the values distributed between 0 and 1 and no particular variable will be able to dominate distance calculations so these are actually two alternatives for uh, normalizing or scaling the values so that uh, some variables do not dominate we'll look at how to do both of these with R okay so let's see here first one I'm showing you here in uh, R is how do you rescale the values to 0 1 okay to do that the easiest way to do that is to install this package called scales unfortunately there's a double quote missing here okay so I changed that so install the package called scales and then load that library package library scales right and then we read this data set called data conversion dot CSV I just created a small data set that's posted on a course web right and then let's just take a look at some of the data here okay so you've got age state gender height income okay and height is in inches so that that's the data you have this is just uh, I've just shown you the first three rows there are more rows there okay so now I'm calculating the scaled values of the income by scaling I mean make the minimum zero and the maximum one okay so to do that I'm just I can do something like students dollar income dot rescaled okay now originally the students data set data frame had only these five attributes we are saying create a new attribute called income dot scale okay so we are creating a new attribute here called income dot rescale okay we're creating a new attribute uh, sorry about that okay we created a new attribute called income dot rescale remember that dot has no really row it's just a part of a variable name it has no other significance and then we are using the rescale function in the scales package rescale students dollar income so what that will do is it will take the lowest value assign it to zero highest value assign it to one and all the intermediate values will be assigned proportionately 
okay for in fact for every other value it will be value minus min divided by max minus min and that's what you'll get okay so after this if you scale all the variables in your data set here I'm just showing you scaling for a single variable but you can apply this to all the variables so in this example you will be able to scale the state and uh, not state I'm sorry uh, age and you'll also be able to scale income those are the two things you'll be able to scale okay and see notice that after this there's one more column here called income dot rescale okay and of course scaling is what I showed you where you do 0 to 1 normalizing is where you do the uh, you know minus uh, mean divided by standard deviation that is you say for every value how far how many standard deviations away is it from the mean okay to do that there is a function called scale you know unfortunately the name is a little misleading the scale function actually does standardization or normalization and the rescale function rescales the values between 0 and 1 okay so the way to do that here you don't need any additional package you just call the scale function so here I've got this uh, usual file bostonhousing.csv and then I'm saying housing dollar age underscore z okay that's nothing I'm here again I'm just creating a new uh, a new column in the data frame and I'm giving the column the name age underscore z right why underscore z because these values that we are calculating in statistics they're called z values which is which indicates how many standard deviations away from the mean it is okay so I just chose this variable name called age underscore z of course this is just a variable name we could have chosen anything okay so we are saying housing dollar age underscore z is scale housing dollar age okay now if you do names of housing you'll be able to see this new column okay now sometimes you know when you're doing KNN you've got lots of variables you might want to standardize many columns at the same time okay so here if you have you standardized one column age column right but if you have many many variables and you want to standardize several of them at the same time doing it like this one at a time is cumbersome you can still do it there's nothing wrong it's just cumbersome so in our uh, course package Hodar I just wrote a function that does everything at the same time so for example here let's say you want to uh, scale the first third and fifth columns of our Boston housing data set okay then I can just say housing equals hodar dot scale dot many that's the name of the function that I wrote that's the name of my function hodar dot scale dot many housing which is the name of the data frame comma c1 comma 3 comma 5 that is which are the columns that you want to normalize okay you do that and then it does all the, the whole thing now remember it's important for you to assign the result to this original data frame okay or to some other data frame otherwise it will just compute the values but the values will not be stored anywhere okay that is why I said housing equals hodar dot scale dot many housing comma c135 okay so after that you notice that there are three new variables created crim underscore z indus underscore z and nox underscore z which are the first third and fifth columns in the original data set as you can see here crim indus nox first third and fifth okay so you can do this also to normalize your uh, data right now when you're doing KNN you can adopt either approach you could either normalize the variables or you can rescale the variables now uh, for many situations rescale comes in handy we will see that shortly okay so important point is if you're using KNN first of all you need to have all predictive variables to be numeric okay predictive when I say all variables we mean all predictor variables I should have said normalize all predictors okay normalize all the predictor variables not the target variable target variable if you're doing a classification obviously has to be a factor okay so so distance obviously because we are computing distance you need to have numerical predictors okay but what if some of your predictors are categorical variables okay sometimes that's what happens right I mean you cannot control what is in a data set sometimes you have lots of categorical variables and yet 
you believe that you might be able to apply KNN. What do you do if some of your predictors are categorical? Okay, so in this case, for example, here I have uh, four variables. Two of them are numeric, might be able to use them as they are, but two of them are categorical. Okay, or let's say income is our uh, target variable. In that case, you've got one predictor variable which is categorical. Okay, so this variable here, status, is a categorical predictor variable. Okay, so how can you uh, let's say you want to use KNN to classify income of people, but you have a categorical predictor. So before you do anything, you have to convert it into a numeric predictor. Otherwise, you cannot use KNN. How do you convert a categorical variable into a numeric variable? Okay. So that's, that's our question. You might have read this in your earlier course. You can create dummy variables for categorical variables and dummy variables are 0, 1 values and once they become zeros and ones you can then use it for KNN. Let's take an example here. Okay, So here our original data set has this categorical variable called status and it has values student, unemployed, retired, employed. Four different values. Okay, So what you could do is to add additional variables. Okay, So you have status uh, I have not shown that in the second uh, table here. Instead, you create new variables, student, unemployed, employed, uh, you know, and uh, retired, which we are not showing here, and I will shortly see why we are not showing that, right? So, if somebody is a student, you put a 1 in the student and then put zeros in the other columns, okay? Which is why both of these are 1s, because the first two students are uh, people are students. The third one is unemployed, so you put a one under unemployed, put zeros in all the rest. Okay. So the idea is, for a categorical variable, take all the different options that it has, and make as many variables as there are options in the categorical variable. And then for every case, you put a one corresponding to the variable which it belongs to, and put zeros elsewhere. Okay. That's the whole idea here. An important point is notice how the different values of category variables have now become attributes with 0, 1 values, but there were four values, we are only showing three here. Why are we doing that? The reason we are doing that is once the values of three are determined, the fourth one is obvious. So for example, if this is one, then uh, and this is zero, this is zero, the other one has to be zero. Okay. If this is zero, one, zero, this is, and if all of the, all the three are zero, then obviously the fourth one is the one. Okay, So including that, what it does is it adds redundant values into our uh, data set. Okay? And some of the techniques, this, I mean, for KNN it will not matter, but for some other techniques, when you have redundant values, especially linear regression, uh, the application itself will fail. Okay, So that is why we don't want to have uh, extra columns. So when you have a factor or a categorical variable with n different options, then you will have n minus 1 dummy variables. Incidentally, these are called dummy variables. Okay, student, unemployed, employed. These are dummy variables because these are not real variables from the problem set, but they are dummy variables we created just because we wanted to convert it into numeric. Okay. So again, as I pointed out, the status for this particular case student is 0, unemployed is 0, employed is 0, therefore the status is retired just by inference. Okay, This one you can try it on your own. I have posted the, the PowerPoint so you can try this on your own. Okay, You can check this out later. I am not spending time. on. Okay, How do you create dummy variables in R? Uh, you install the dummies package, install.packages dummies, load the package, library dummies, then you read the data, and then here you're looking at the first two data sets. You've got state and J. Okay. And then all you have to do is to do dummy students dollar state. Okay. Now, by the way, you won't be using this particular command because this doesn't assign the values to any result. This is just showing you how what it generates. Okay. So if you just say dummy students dollar state, then remember it creates these variables, uh, four variables. This is slightly skewed. I mean the column names should be shifted to the right. So state nj, state ny, state tx and state va. Those are the four different values of state 
in the data set. Now remember the dummies function, the dummy function will create all the dummy variables. Okay, It's up to us to leave one of them out when we use them in a data mining technique. Okay, We won't use all the dummy variables, we'll leave one out. But the dummy function will create all the dummy variables. Okay, The more typical way in which we'll use it is what is shown at the bottom here. Right? So we are saying uh, for students, create the dummy by doing dummy student dollar state. Okay, so uh, we are just saying create the dummies and C bind. C bind stands for binding the columns. Okay, so take the original data set, students, create the dummy columns, add them all together to create the new data frame called students. Okay, so this students data frame now will be the original students data frame along with all the dummy columns that have just been generated. Okay, so C bind is what you use for binding columns together to make a data frame. Okay, so you have this data frame, it already has four columns. This dummy is going to create four more columns. So the new data frame will actually have eight columns. Okay, so that is how you create dummies in R. Okay, now, uh, so here, once again, just like in the previous example, right, if you have, uh, let's say you have not just one categorical variable, but several categorical variables, okay, then you have to keep repeating this step again and again. C bind dummy this, C bind dummy that. You have to keep repeating this step. In our book package, Hodar, we have created a convenience function called hodar.dummy. And what hodar.dummy does is it allows you to create dummy variables for many columns at the same time. Okay, so here you see the dummy for many columns at the same time. Okay, so it says create the dummies for columns 3 and 4. And then uh, if you look at this example, again dummy example 2, uh, the file is posted on uh, CourseWeb. If you try it out, you'll find that it creates dummies for both uh, gender which is, uh, uh, okay, uh, origin and gender. Both are categorical, three and four, and it creates for uh, origin, origin Far East, origin Far East, uh, etc. Why is Far East come twice? Okay, that's because there's some error in the data. This one doesn't have an underscore. So he treated the two of them as different things. Okay, that's a mistake in the data file. If I had typed it right, you wouldn't have had this. Okay, so it's generating. And for gender also, it has generated the uh, dummies. Okay, so when you're using KNN, if you have categorical input predictors, you have to convert them to dummy variables and use one, you know, drop one dummy variable when you do the analysis. Okay, so KNN for classification requires categorical output variable. If it's not, if your output variable is numeric, then what you need to do is to convert it to categorical. We'll shortly show you how to do that. If output variable is not categorical, then uh, consider binning. Okay, we'll see the technique shortly, how to create bins. Or, of course, use KNN for prediction. It requires numerical input variables if your input variables are not numerical, then convert them to dummy variables. Okay, so how do you convert a numeric output variable into a categorical one? The process is called binning. Okay, so this is your original data. Now suppose this is going to be your target variable in a KNN analysis. Okay, so now all of these values are numeric. You want to convert them to classes. What you can do is to just take the low values, put them into a bin called low, take the medium values, put them into another bin, etc. So based on the range in which a value falls, you can assign it to a particular class. Okay. So you could do that just like, you know, we look up in, uh, uh, in, in Excel. So here I'm saying all the values between 0 and 50 are A, 50 and 100 are B, 100 and 150 are C, etc. So the value is classified as A, B, C, D, E or F, depending on the range in which it falls. Okay, anything above 250 is an F, etc. Okay, so define using this, if you classify the values, you'll get the values to be like this. Okay, so the original values are here, the binned values are here. 
Okay, so now this has become a categorical variable. So if this were your target, it was numeric, you needed to be categorical, you can convert it to categorical by binning. Okay, how do you do binning in R? You do binning in R by using the cut function. Okay, so here I've got a file called students dollar income. These are the income values. And, uh, you know, anything from uh, less than 10,000, I want to make it as low. 31,000, 10,000 to 31,000 is medium. Above 31,000 is high. Okay, that's what we want to do. Uh, so we can say students dollar income cat that's a new variable I'm creating income category cut students dollar income breaks names okay so between uh, you know less than 10,000 low 10,000 to 31,000 medium above 10 to 31,000 high okay so that's what happens so 30,000 has become medium uh, there are no high values okay I should have done done this slightly differently and then you've got only low and medium values. Of course, you're only seeing the first five, six rows. The remaining rows have some high values as well. Okay, that's how you do binning. So in this case, we've taken this and normalized the data set. Okay, there's no binning shown here. So here you've got, uh, you know, your uh, riding mowers data set that you might have used. And this is the original data set. The normalized data set is normalized income, normalized lot size looks like this okay so you have that now when you do KNN what you actually do is you KNN requires you to have three partitions not just two partitions okay so you'll have a training partition you'll have a validation partition and you'll have a third partition called as a test partition now why does KNN require three partitions that is because really we use the first two partitions to determine a good value for k okay so we use training and validation partition to determine a value for k and then we test the value of k on the test partition okay so really the first two partitions are both used for model building that is why you need a third partition for testing for model validation okay so let's say this is a training partition let's say that's the validation partition in KNN what we are going to do is to consider every row of the validation partition right consider every row of the validation partition find its k nearest neighbors in the training partition okay so for example let's say k is 3 how did we choose k equals 3 what we really do in KNN is we try different values of k and then for each value of k we find the error matrix and then we choose the value of k which we like most that's all which gives the best performance that we want okay so let's say we are in a case where k equals 3 and now for the first case here remember you have to work with normalized values not with the original values okay so for the first case we find the k nearest neighbors in the training data set how do we find the neighbors well based on distance okay we already know how to compute the distance so in this case it turns out that the three nearest neighbors are all non-owners okay they're all non-owners and therefore we can say that this case the majority are non-owners majority of the neighbors are non-owners and therefore we classify this case as a non-owner okay this is the real ownership here is where the classification is okay so KNN is actually very simple first you normalize all the predictors and then for every divide into three partitions for every case in the validation partition find its K nearest neighbors and then uh, based on the majority class classify the case or if you want probabilities take the proportions right so in this case probability is going to be one because all the neighbors are non-owners if two neighbors were non-owners then the probability of being a, an owner would be uh, 0.33 okay so in this case I'm sorry probability of being an being an owner is zero because all are non-owners so probability of being an owner will be zero okay so let's see how to do uh, actually I'll put this for the next slide next uh, recording <laughs>